This is YouTube University's Automotive Locksmith Wars Universal Key Systems. Lesson 1 Build a Key System, Super Chips, and more. So, what you will need you'll need this Universal Key System. It's made from GTL. Specifically, if you look up GTL Build a Key System, you'll find this. GTL VDI pins. These are from Auto. These are Auto. You can get them from different suppliers. These are super chips. You're gonna need screwdrivers, like little tiny ones. Or, I prefer this one because it's like a magnetic tip. It comes in handy with the little parts sometimes. This is from Lock, Mon Lock Monkey. You're gonna need something like this. I believe GTL has their own. Goso Lock Goso Lockpicks has their own. They have their own variations. They decide which one's best for you. But this is that you insert that little pin into the into the X Horse or KDI Y remotes. Right there. GTL Pry Tool. I love these, and they're good for generic remote heads for separating them or separating these you're gonna need plenty of batteries in general they're different kinds but you know for this for the building key systems cr2032 is what you generally need universal shell heads i got these from aliexpress there we go so i'm gonna go through the universal shell heads now so this is a key DUI version. It's held together by a pin right there. And you would insert the VDI pin right there. And it looks nice. I don't I I generally haven't had any problems with it. You can insert the chip right here. The only problem is that sometimes before sealing it, you're gonna want to test the key out and make sure the signal reaches the car because sometimes because the chips all the way down here it doesn't always reach the car like i've had a honda job and um it, it wouldn't it would only turn on the car for a second then it wouldn't turn on the car so because it was too far away that's the only issue um i've actually seen the newer versions that i've only found on aliexpress that have the chip higher up so i'll probably get those in the future but Generally, it's just better to have the ch the keys with the chip already inside them. But I mean, if you're starting out, this will help in the beginning. This is the other one you saw me use, right? It comes with a little screwdriver. Uh, so I'll show you how to how put it together. I'm gonna use this. Well, for, for the thicker ones, like the high security keys you have to modify a bit how to stretch it out beforehand right and there's this tiny little screw i prefer this magnetic screwdriver go as deep as you can right and it's in there pretty good the chip goes right there so it's a perfect spot And you would seal it until you hear a click. Oh. See, just like that. Um, these are a little bit of pain to remove once you... Both of them are a little a bit, a bit of pain to remove. Like if you to remove those VDI pin, it's a pain. So you want to make sure you get it right the first time. This one's a little easier. You can just use your pry tool and put it apart. A little apart. Um, the biggest weakness is, is as a... To, there's different colors of these, but generally they're kind of ugly looking, I guess. So, um, mostly what I notice is my female customers, they look at it like, uh, what is this? So there's that. Again, it's probably better to have the keys with the chip already inside it, the generic blackheads, but you know, hey, when you're starting out, this is okay, I think. And most guys have liked it, so there's that.
right now I'm gonna show you how to use this lock pick removal tool from Lock Monkey. Right. So it's cool. It has these magnetic little things so you can put it. That's you see there, that's I put the VDI pin right there. These are if you need to take take VDI pins out. You can press it against and there are more magnets on each side. Comes in handy. For the meantime, as you can see, it, there's a little insert that fits right there. So this key is not in there. So this is an XRS remote. Now it's halfway in there. I put it in the hole. Now you just need to press it together. Hold on. There we go. Pretty basic. It's in there nice and tight. This is an X Force one. I just switched it out. yeah that's how you use the this, this lock monkey removal tool there are other types of tools like this i know gtls makes like a little platform where you can put it in and but i like this the best to be honest i know Goso lockpicks has their own version but this is great for me now moving on to super chips or x27 chips There we go, that's an X26 chip. These go in hand in hand with the universal key system because you'll use these a lot for, but for example, the shells, if you're just cloning a key, you'll put it in. Uh, and that is that, as you saw with all the inserts where you can put them in. They also work with KDIY or x remotes. remote, so if you have a spot, you can just put it in there. Okay, so I'm gonna use uh, this. Hold on, it's kind of hard to grab this chip. All right, so read transponder. It's a 13 chip, right? So I had to do this recently. Now, put in the super chip. reads transponder and now it has the same properties as this chip the super chip so now that has the same properties now you can program this into an all keys lost job if you only have one say like i do one of these left i also like to get oem chips for this reason that are clonable it's just better to get oem chips in general but especially if they work together with the x the x27 chips because you want to copy good material if the source material sucks then the x27 gonna suck All the very reason i don't like to generate chips because you know you're kind of just hoping it's just not as good as cloning the a good quality oem chip in my opinion and from what i've heard too so try to get oem chips whenever you do so you can clone them to the x27 chips sometimes you will have to generate them if you're gonna tight if you're gonna tight spawn you just restocking issue or whatever you can do that with multiple types. Not every chip's clonable, but if you want them to be clonable, you know, they help it helps their OEM chips, right? This is an aftermarket chip. It's for some of the newer Toyotas. And keep in mind these are normally clonable, but because I have an aftermarket chip, it's not clonable. So there's that. So try to get OEM chips whenever you can, because now I'm stuck with that one, and I generally don't like to use aftermarkets if I don't have to. Anyway guys, I hope you learned quite a bit, and thanks for watching.